Hey, what's up? Welcome to DGen Ed. That's degenerative education, meaning none of this is financial advice. Just me having fun looking at charts like the chart behind me, which is of Tilray Brands, ticker symbol TLRY. And so here I am recording this on Saturday morning, October 5th, after Tilray closed October 4th, closing out the week at a price of $1.69, being down a little more than half a percent on the day. And really, you know, it's kind of been hovering around $1.68. $1.69. And so in this video, I'm just doing kind of my daily follow up on Tilray before they report their earnings on October 10th. I have been accumulating a very small position either in shares and or in calls uh, because I think that it might be breaking out of this uh, you know wedge that it does seem like we have formed but it may also be breaking down this is very risky so you know whatever i get into i am not recommending buying calls shares or anything like that i just kind of wanted to track this for myself for my own learning looking into unusual whales data and just you know doing a daily follow-up on this ticker to see what happens if my thesis does play out that it will break out Maybe I'm proven wrong. So, uh, you know, do take all of this analysis with a grain of salt. I'm really just doing this for myself for fun uh, to see what happens and to see if, you know, I am learning more uh, from unusual whales. But anyways, enough rambling on about that. Uh, just looking at the chart here, you know, from the previous videos, I have drawn these two purple lines, one being this dashed line here that is currently at, uh, you know, let's see, right around a price of, a dollar sixty eight and uh, then this solid purple uptrend being uh, you know below current price well below and actually below the lowest low that we hit during the week which was on October 2nd and that was at a price of a dollar sixty five so those are two levels that I think we need to be keeping our closes above and so far over the course of last week we have been holding above that upper uptrending line. So I do think that looks pretty good. I do think it looks strong in that sense. However, you know, with these big wicks to the upside, that does suggest that, you know, it's not able to get and maintain momentum to be breaking out. But maybe that is because, you know, we're just waiting for earnings uh, to see a breakout then. But it also could be a breakdown. Um, and with that being said, uh, sorry if I say with that being said a lot, I do notice I say some things uh, over and over and over. Uh, but here, looking at this low of a dollar fifty, it's quite possible that we head down to that level following earnings. Maybe that is a marker that uh, you know price could be heading down there. Although my understanding is no orders will were filled at that price. Uh, that is why I have this line uh, grayed out here. But we have hit that level in the past. If I do take a step back, that was the low of 2023 being a dollar fifty. So it's quite possible that is the low of 2024, and we just haven't really hit it yet. Uh, so do be cautious of that. And one other thing, you know, also exercising some caution here or, uh, you know, displaying something that we might want to consider. If I do remove the drawings and I just throw up the weekly chart here, it does look like, you know, ending the month of August. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, we did... Uh, August 30th was the Friday, so yeah, ending the month of August. We did have this pretty big down move over the course of that final week in August, down 11.4%, and then consolidating for five weeks. And so that makes me think maybe this is a bear flag, especially with these big wicks to the upside, you know, suggesting that we can't be getting higher closes, we can't be closing higher. So maybe this does suggest some weakness and that we are going to be retesting a dollar fifty following earnings. However, one thing that does make me feel a little bit more confident about this is that we have been residing down here for some time. And since these are weekly candles, you know, I would think that we'd probably see a break down over the course of the first three or four weeks. We have not seen that yet. So maybe that's a sign that we've put in a bottom. I am, I am of course, biased, so I think that this is going up. But I just think this is, you know, a good thing to be cautious about that we have this down move and consolidation. Big wicks to the upside suggests that we can't, uh, you know, be breaking out. We're not, we don't have enough momentum to be breaking out. Uh, so do keep that in mind. But I am just going to switch this back to the daily time frame. Uh, so we have that to refer to. 
uh, but I am now going to switch over to Tilray Brands Unusual Whales Options data. And so here we are looking at the options volume, that's call and put volume for one day, which was October 4th. And these are the five minute candles. And so the thing that might stand out to you guys is that there's a lot of green. So maybe that does look pretty good. As price was going up here, we did see uh, calls, uh, you know, start to uh, have some more volume traded. Uh, and then towards the end of the day, when there's this little blip, uh, we did see some more. Uh, but really, you know, the price, which we can see in yellow here, over the course of the day, traded between looks like a high of 172 coming down to a low of 168 and i'm just going to make sure that is consistent with the chart over here so we see a high of 173 low of 168 uh, so we actually did get you know i guess a wick up to 173 but maybe uh, orders were not really filled up there but yeah, I mean, uh, the thing that does stand out is that we did see some call volume pick up a little bit, you know, not a huge amount before price was going up. So maybe uh, that was uh, somebody recognizing that uh, you know, this is at a discount. So I do think that it looks good. Uh, but then if we look at the details up here, total volume traded, 226,000 uh, contracts traded which represents a premium of about $1.6 million. However, the net premium was a reduction of about $350,000. And then so if we look at the call and put breakdown here, we see about 3.1 thousand put contracts traded, which represents a premium of about $83.5 thousand dollars. Uh, whereas the calls, uh, we can see that uh, the volume traded was about 223,000 versus that 3,000 for puts. And then the uh, premium traded for calls was about one point almost six million dollars versus that 83.5 thousand here. So definitely seems like more action on the call side. Uh, but if I do scroll up, it might be a little bit disappointing to you guys. We can see the little uh, bear to bull uh, uh, scale tachometer, I want to say. Uh, that is the majority on the bear side uh, being 59%. Uh, very little on the neutral side, about 39,000 contracts. Uh, but then uh, a bullish uh, being and so let's actually think about that, you know, uh, so it says bearish uh, That is this is so premium. This is premium. So the bearish premium is about uh, 980 dollars almost a million dollars whereas bullish was uh, 630,000 so a little over half a million and so, you know, while we do have a lot of volume traded on calls, so that does seem, oops, uh, that does seem good. It does seem like a lot of those were on the bid side. So people selling those contracts, um, you know, however, though, you know, I find that uh, to be kind of surprising or disappointing because uh, it ha the premium has been pretty low, uh, but maybe uh, the little bounce that we have seen, uh, you know, around here, uh, was the time to be taking profits. And so I can switch this over to, let's see, the net premium. And so the net premium for calls, you know, we did see it, you know, come down here. And so this seems like it was people taking profits. The green is the net call premium. So maybe it was people taking profits as we do have the premium here, then dropping uh, right before close. So maybe that is not looking so good. We do have the net put premium uh, being up over the course of the day uh, and then coming down a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this makes me think it's a little, uh, you know, not looking as good as it was over the past few days. And then if I look at this, now uh, we do have the call premium going up on the third, as I had pointed out in, yes, uh, I guess, Thursday's video. Uh, but then it has come down. But this is all relative within the day as far as I understand it. So, you know, while call premium did go down, uh, let's see, uh, looks like net call premium down uh, $373,000. It did go up on Thursday, an increase of $1.14 So, 
even though this did come down on Friday, it could just be you know taking profits or or lowering risk over the weekend. It is still up relatively, uh, you know, considering uh, where it was at at the end of the day on Thursday. And then now I am just going to switch back to the options volume. And so we can see here, maybe this gives a little bit more hope uh, because we can see that the put volume, 20,000 contracts versus call volume is just under 500,000 contracts with the premium on puts being 438,000 versus 5.27 million in premium in calls. So again, it seems like there's a lot more money on the bullish side, but also, you know, my understanding as I am learning this, this is the uh, premium that has been traded, not the premium that is being held. And um, yeah, but, but maybe I am uh, misunderstanding that because uh, this over here is the premium that was traded on the 4th, so just exclusive to the 4th. That is 1.656 million. And so, yeah, but maybe if I scroll down, you know, that we'll get some clarity with that. Oh, and actually, hmm, no, that's, uh, I wanted to look at the specific contract that I'm holding. But, yeah, I think that this is not necessarily, yeah, we... To look at the total, you know, premium, that is the other uh, chart that I was looking at. So this is going to be the call volume traded about, uh, um, and uh, the call premium traded, which is a, over $5 million. But if we look at the net premium over here, that is going to show uh, what is being held, I believe. No, so this is just for the, this information is just for the day. This is all daily. It will be nice to see this over a, a larger period of time uh, because, you know, all of this data, you know, the daily, data over here, this is daily stats. So I kind of need to figure out how, how to look at the premium overall that is going up. And so maybe this is uh, the better way to, or maybe uh, strike premium. Maybe I want to look at that. Yeah, I'm not I'm not familiar enough with looking at this data. And so here, yeah, I mean, I am going to go with the assumption that this is, you know, all of the calls and that this is the uh, premium that is held worth over $5 million. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, but, uh, you know, having said that, <laughs> being a little bit different than with that being said, I am going to switch over to the contract that I hold. Um, or actually, before I do that, maybe I should look at the bottom here, the hottest contracts being traded. Yes, uh, sorry, I missed this. Uh, this is something that I think is going to be pretty important. So this is the hottest contract uh, by volume. So yesterday on the 4th, we saw the $2 call uh, that was highest traded. Uh, that was 79%. Uh, so all of these, you know, closed out of the money. So this was all a loss of money, even though this was, you know, on the bullish side here, everybody who was buying that lost a lot of money. So just because it's, you know, only one cent per contract doesn't mean uh, you're not going to lose money. You can definitely lose a lot of money on these contracts. And so, you know, these both expired. This one, you know, these people actually 150. Uh, these were these people were taking profits. They didn't want to hold an exercise. So that is, you know, not suggesting uh, uh, the greatest uh, thing here, but then moving on to next week's expiration, two dollar call, majority of people buying, so that's people thinking that price will go up following earnings, so that is good. And then October eighteenth, in my view, that's a safer bet because you got a week buffer you know, between you know the day after earnings, which are reported on the tenth, which is Thursday pre market, and uh, you know I can stream that if you guys want, so let me know in the comments if you do. Uh, and then, you know, we also have the January 17th, uh, I've got that thing popping up, January 17th at a uh, strike of $3.50, so pretty bullish. That is, you know, about 50-50, uh, that is exactly 50-50, and it's just showing the, um, the more bullish side there. And then this is October 25th, $2 strike, that is majority bullish, so also, uh, you know, good there. Calls that these might have the dollar fifty strike, uh, so they are in the money already. But this is the day after earnings, and these are buys, so this is suggesting 
that people are thinking that price is going higher. And this is not the contract that I'm holding. Uh, the one that I'm holding is actually not that hot, um, which is maybe stupid for me to be doing, but uh, I feel more comfortable with it. Anyways, this contract here is the expiration of January 17th, $2 strike, majority of buys. So that is also bullish. Actually, no, this is the, this is the uh, contract that I hold. This is the strike of $2 with the expiration of November 15th, so more than a month away. So it does make me feel pretty good uh, that my contract has made the hottest contracts list and that it was more on the bullish side on uh, uh, traded day, uh, traded on uh, Friday. Actually, this may not just be limited. I think that this data is, uh, yes, this is just for Friday, and that is um, a 63% um, uh, on the bullish side, so that does look pretty good. And with that being said, as I do say, I am going to switch over to that contract finally. And so here, this is the $2 strike expiring on November 15th. Pretty flat throughout the day, hit a high of, let's see, uh, we can see down here, hit a high of 13 cents, hit a low of 10 cents. Again, you know, we can see here 63% on the bullish side, so looking pretty good. And it's actually uh, been, ooh, I need to scroll down here a little bit. It has been, you know, more on the bullish side. Let's see, uh, the going back all the way to the 27th, it's been you know more on the ask side so more people buying these contracts so more people thinking uh, that price will be going up to two dollars uh, or towards two dollars uh, before november 15th so looking good there the first or the the most recent day that it was more on the bearish side was on september 26th and that was 47 uh, percent uh, bearish so pretty close to 50%, so not really looking too bad. And also, you know, we did get a break in the uh, decrease in open interest that we have seen from the first to the second and the second to the third. Going from the third to the fourth, we did see an increase of 80 contracts in open interest, going from 17.555 thousand contracts up to 17,635. And the volume traded on uh, Friday was about 10% uh, of the total open interest. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and the total premium traded on Friday, again, being more on the bullish side. So people buying these contracts, about 21,000, which might seem like a lot. You know, I don't trade that much. Uh, just, you know, if I if I had that amount of money uh, to trade, you know, I would. Uh, but so for this... That might seem like a lot, but if you look up the definition of what a YOLO is on Wall Street Bets, it's $10,000. So this could be just, you know, a couple people kind of gambling around earnings to DGENs, to people YOLOing. And so that might be, uh, you know, something to not really consider too much. The thing that stands out to me more so is the uh, 54000 traded on the 30th, again, that being more on the bullish side. So I think that stands out a little bit more in the rest of these uh, days traded, you know, 54,000. That was really uh, the one that stood out. And um, yeah, I did go over this in the uh, uh, on the prior full overview screen. And, and so I guess, you know, I should go over uh, the details here from this contract. And so what we can see from a specific contract is, I had already mentioned the volume was about 10% of the total open interest. The average fill is about 13 cents and about 22,000 uh, uh, in premium traded on the day. And so the ask side was about uh, you know 1,100 uh, contracts traded, whereas about 600 were uh, being sold. Uh, so I should say, yes, we're being bought on the ask side or the bid side being about 600. And so this is the contract that I hold. And so what I've done, you know, I kind of wanted to record this video before I do some of the other ones. I will have an AMC video out pretty soon, as well as I believe Archer Aviation. But I wanted to go over uh, this for you guys, also for myself, because I kind of wanted to decide if I should be adding more, being more aggressive. 
before earnings, the few days before earnings. And so what I did on Friday, um, I did add one more contract. I did up it from buy at nine cents and eight cents. I did get one more contract at 10 cents. I do have some limit cells placed, which I, you know, I'm kind of debating whether I should leave them or not. Um, let's just see. I do have cells at uh, 20%, 30%, and 40%, which is uh, 14, 15, and 16 cents. So really, you know, not that exciting. We haven't gotten up to 14 cents. So, you know, maybe I want to leave that. And I'm just kind of contemplating, do I want to buy another contract at 10 cents? That was the low. And actually, if I do flip over to this again, we can see that the lows for the days here, uh, you know, 8 cents was the low on the 25th as well as on the 2nd. I believe, actually, I don't know that I had a buy placed on the 2nd. You could look back on my uh, video from, I believe, the first, uh, maybe the initial one that I did. Um, actually, I, I can pull that up. So just one second, I got to pull up uh, my finder. Uh, let's see, I've got a screenshot here. That, um, oh yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I didn't have the buy orders placed that I had. And so, yeah, I guess on the yeah, let's see, on the second, hmm. On the second, I had an order filled at nine cents. Maybe I had one placed at eight cents. I'm not sure. So if that was the low and I had an order placed, it wasn't filled. Uh, but, you know, I'm not really sure. Sorry about that. Uh, but, really, you know, the thing that stands out to me is eight cents has been the lowest here, whether that was on the 25th or on the second. And for the most part, it's been around nine cents, but then it's gone up to 10 cents. The last time the low is 10 cents was on September 24th. So, you know, I think, yeah, maybe I'll, I will place another uh, buy order for 10 cents, just one contract, so nothing that crazy because, you know, I am, let's see, I'm just gonna switch over to the chart here because I, I just like looking at this more. Um, let's see, I am risking, you know, $55 on contracts that uh, you know, if this does break lower, going down to 550 uh, after earnings, then you know I'm probably going to be out 55 dollars. I'd probably cut losses there if it does start to head down to 550 because I have a stop loss at let's see, I believe it's a uh, dollar 60. I've talked about it before, uh, but yeah, I still have a stop loss at a dollar 60. And so if that gets filled for my 10 shares, I'm not buying more shares. Uh, this is really just to kind of trigger the, okay, my stop loss was hit, then I need to cut my losses. What I would do, you know, I cut my losses, I turned $16.90 into 16, so I'd lose 90 cents, not a big deal there. What I would probably do is cut half of these contracts. Uh, you know, I'm sure I'd be losing a good amount of money on that, but then I'd hold the rest to uh, see if it does go higher. So yeah, risking $55 there, I'd be willing to risk another $10, another $9, and another eight if the premium contract does drop lower. But um, you know, I just don't want to be risking more than $100. And so I'm actually uh, gonna pull up my calculator here so we can see maybe that is uh, something that I do want to consider. So right now, risking, $55.25 with the calls plus that $16.90. That is $72.15. I do have a buy order uh, for one contract at eight cents, which translates to $8.05 after fees. And then also I'm gonna do $9.05 for the uh, buy order, the limit buy at nine cents. This is after fees. So now I've got $89.25. So if I do put another buy order at $10, uh, or sorry, 10 cents, that would translate to $10.05 after fees, I would then be risking um, about $100, $99.30. So that is keeping this risk to below my desired maximum of nine of one hundred dollars, so yeah, I will add a limit buy at ten cents, just one contract, and then I have a limit buy at nine cents, a limit buy at eight cents, and then I will not do any more after that. Uh, and you know, maybe 
this $100, you know, turns into 110. That's a 10% swing, but also, you know, maybe it goes down to zero. And I will probably, uh, you know, be selling this in increments of 10% starting with, uh, uh, you know, 20% and then going higher. So I would at least make uh, 20% on this. That's 20 bucks. Nothing too crazy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that is effectively, you know, just what I wanted to be going over here. And so, you know, as always, those are just my thoughts. If you found them helpful, make sure you like the video, share your thoughts in the comments down below, and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll do my next update on Tilray on Monday after the close. I am working though, so it'll probably be later in the evening. Take care, you guys.